Well, Ted, you've been in the movie industry a long time. I grew up in the movie industry, so <laughs> it's 75 years. I hate to admit it, don't tell anybody out there that I'm 75. My father starred in his first film in 1926, so in a few years will be 100 years for the family. Two of my children are following in our footsteps and doing movie guides, so we've been around in the industry, so I know a lot of people in the industry, and I, we work with a lot of people. How has Hollywood changed? Well, during the golden age of Hollywood, when Mr. Smith went to Washington, it was a wonderful life, and the bells of St. Mary rang out across the land. Um, there was three church film offices. They call them church film office. The Protestant film office, which I inherited all the files, the, Pro the Roman Catholic Legion of Decency, and then the Jewish Defense League. And they didn't have any censorship powers, but they kept saying to Hollywood, would you like to reach a bigger audience? Uh, right now, about five times more people go to church every week than go to movies when there was no COVID. Um, so it's a, the church is much bigger. And in those days, the church was very active. And then they shut down in the 60s. And within three years, you went from 100% G-rated to 82% R-rated. You went from the greatest story ever told about Jesus to the first sex in Satanism. Anyway, I can go into that in detail. But we came back. I inherited the Protestant Film Office files after we, I was head of the company that did The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe on CBS yeah. Television. And I started doing this economic analysis to see what would make more money. And I really, Kevin, did not know what would make more money. In fact, last year with COVID, I, thought I was really scared that something bad would succeed. And we kept showing by looking at all these criteria, what is the worldview, what is the... Everything that we do when we're together, uh, you know, right. at different events. And we found out that the better a movie is, the less foul language, the less sex, the less violence, the more money it makes. Now, that should be a no-brainer because four tickets to a family and right. you've got beautiful kids uh, is better than one ticket to a, some crazy guy going in. And last year, I thought this is going to collapse. But 90% of the top streaming films were family-oriented with positive representation of Christians. And that's your message from Movie Guide. I've been to yeah. the awards, which is, by the way, fabulous, and we highly recommend it for anybody. If you Thank want to you. see what's going on in Hollywood, the Movie Guide Awards is the place. We follow, we look up the Movie Guide before we go see a movie to make sure it's worth seeing. It's got to be quality, but also to make sure that it's not going to offend our values, not going to try and tear down the things that we've been putting into, our, into our family. But here's another question. China has learned that Hollywood is a means of manipulating the American psyche, the thinking. Well, so, you may know that China was very big in Hollywood. Friends of mine who were the head of Disney, et cetera, were dealing with them. And then she pulled the rug out from under the people dealing with them. And they pulled back their funding from Hollywood, leaving a lot of people in the dust. In fact, I'm having a super class in a week uh, with the head of Legendary Pictures, which was almost, they did Godzilla and all these films with a lot of Chinese extras. Right. And just finished Dune, China pulled all their money out of that. So these big companies that are gigantic, Warner Brothers, et cetera, have lost that Chinese marketplace and they're fighting. Through, and then, you know, uh, Disney did Mulan. Right. And uh, then China started pulling it out and so it's a, it's a very ridiculous situation right now because she is going back to... to Communist she, roots. Prime, he's yeah. going back to Maoism. Yeah, he really is. No question about it. We've seen that. You know, We look in the national security community and you see the opening. From 1999, they published the book Unrestricted Warfare. Yeah. And I, she has I been know. following that track ever since he became uh the man uh, in China. He's a vicious guy. My son studied at Chinese University of Hong Kong, and my daughter taught in Beijing and taught in another city in China, and that's all closed up. I mean, he, my son is brokenhearted about what happened to Hong Kong and oh, Chinese University. I, I've got to tell you, I think this is, you know, I like Sean Petter, I like the Ludwig von Mises, I like the Austrian school, yeah. <laughs> and Sean Petter kept saying, you know, if you keep a relationship with these people, which is what they did after World War II with Germany, with the Marshall Plan, you can help them become more involved with our economy. Right. Once you cut off that relationship, you've almost gone to war. And that's what Wilson, President Wilson did after World War I. He actually 
is called by Otto Scott one of the great fools of history because he cut off, he hated Germany so much, he punished him so much, he created his own nightmare. And uh, China is going to, you know, this going to be pushed to the edge because Hong Kong was a money generator for China. It was a port for China. It, all of these things are a big mistake from my point of view. Yeah. And you're the economist, I'm not. Yeah, well, Hong Kong, I was there last in 1999, is yeah. fabulous. And I think it's important, the Chinese people are wonderful people. I know. Absolutely wonderful. You can see that in Hong Kong, you can see it in Taiwan, you can see it in mainland China. But the Communist Party and the Maoism that That's she terrible. is pushing is terrible. It's bad for the world, well, you know, it's bad just, for Christians, it's bad for liberty. They just seized all those film libraries. I don't know whether you remember, but uh, 40 years ago, you know, Kung Fu films and stuff were very popular. And they now say they're anti-patriotic. Mm -hmm. And they've seized all those film libraries. And yesterday, I guess they just closed down uh, the largest free paper in Hong Kong. So to me, this is Well, this and you is see abhorrent. the human atrocities. You see the human organ harvesting of yeah. the Uyghur population, which you know, is a Muslim population there. And you shouldn't have your organs pieced out and sold off. It's just horrible. Yeah, it's frightening. It's frightening. But what you're doing is you're helping preserve our culture going forward with Movie Guide, which is a form of economic warfare. How can people invest in films that will help preserve the culture? Well, you just asked the most important question. The reason that we have so much influence in Hollywood, because there are about a thousand lobbying groups, there are lots of, you know, Planned Parenthood funded two films last year. But if people go to the right movies, they vote for those movies, by putting their $10 down for their ticket. Right. So when you vote for the good, you get more good. And thank God, between New York and Hollywood, there's Dallas and Fort Worth, and you're voting for the good. And that's why Peter Rabbit and these family films do much better, because the average family in the middle of the country does not want to support what's going on in you know, the, the fringes of the country. Right, well, when we go to the movies, we buy the popcorn, we buy the sodas, we Me buy too. everything across the board as a family. One person going to see something, yeah, no, I think it's right. So how can, we talk about weaponizing your money. We're talking about making good investments. So we've talked to Kevin and Sam Sorbo, we've had them in the economic war room. Two of my favorite uh, people. How can we help gather capital? Because people don't want to invest, they're worried about investing in Coca-Cola, right? It's like Coca-Cola wants to get involved in the elections in Georgia, I don't want to invest. So where can they invest? How can they well, invest in there, there are two parts of Hollywood. Um, there's a showy part that wants to be part of the club. Right. And to be part of the club, even friends of mine who are Christian in Hollywood, I won't mention their names, um, do things that I think are very bad because they want to be part of the club. Oh, I'm part of the club. I'm, I'm, I love what you're doing. You know, guys that I know very well who've talked to me for hours. And then the other thing is they've got to keep, you know, 56,000 people work for Warners. So they got to keep generating family films to do that. Now they have tons of money. You know, I teach how to make movies and succeed at the box office. So really what you need is the development money to get the movie off the ground. You've got to make sure that you don't put all the money into the film, because I teach this, because Hollywood won't ignore your movie and take your money. They love fleecing people who come in who, are, who don't know what they're doing. So the whole economics of Hollywood, like any other economic industry, is a craft. It's something you understanding. Teach, I know you teach screenwriters. And I teach I, the I economics. Know, do, you teach I how, teach, do you teach how to invest in films? Oh, I do. We teach the whole thing. And That's what we want. We've, we've got advisors, financial advisors. We're training 10,000 financial advisors with a trillion dollars of capital. One trillion, not well, billion, I have trillion. A, I have so a, how do we I have teach a friend them of mine, to help people invest in, in good family-friendly money-making movies? Every time we do a class, we bring in somebody from Hollywood who's in the film finance. My favorite film finance person was, you know, the CFO of the largest film finance company. And then he moved to be the CFO of uh, Animal Logic, the Peter Rabbit. But he comes in and just lays out exactly what you have to do Another friend of mine is the best lawyer in Hollywood. He shows you how to do the contracts. Hollywood contracts are completely different. We've, if you've got a Texas lawyer or whatever else, they don't understand because it's all 
just a code language. And people get fleeced all That's the time. That's called Hollywood accounting. That's called I mean, Hollywood accounting, right. Hey, all right, so one of my films that I loved, uh, The Promise, Kurt Kerkorian. Right. Tried, tried to make that movie so many times at MGM, wasn't able to. State Department intervened one time. Turkish government intervened multiple oh, I times. Know, I know. Spent $100 million making a movie left in his will. He couldn't make it till after he died. Had great actors. I loved the movie. It was beautiful. And, and, and yet nobody ever heard of it. The man who's the head of his foundation, who's a doctor at UCLA, comes up to our office and he's a good friend. Um, it is. You know, the trouble is the studios make 40% of the films, but they control over 90% of the profits. Uh. And I had a friend of mine, I'll give you an example that I can talk about, who was the, one of the seven main heirs of the Walmart, Sam Walton Fortune. She made a little film called Gordy. I think I showed it at, uh, at the organization that we talked about before. And, di and I got United Artists to distribute it. And Disney said, and the head of Disney was a Christian. I mean, he went to church. He loves me. We're good friends. And he said, if you distribute this movie through United Artists during the summer, we are not going to give United Artists a first-run movie for the next three years. United Artists went bust. It was headed up by uh, a Presbyterian in Denver. It was bought by another Presbyterian in Denver who then combined it with uh, Edmunds Theaters and made Regal. And he, and the first when he bought it, he told all his friends at the church, I'm only going to carry G and PG films. Within a month, he was carrying R-rated films. The studios have the power because they have, you know, whatever analogy you want to get, they got the oil, they got the money, they got the right. resource. You've got to deliver a film once a week. So we need to learn this. I'd like to invite you to come and help train our financial advisors. I'd love to. And teach them just how to invest, because we get hit up a lot. Oh, this is a great film I, and it's gonna I change the world, but we don't know, how do we know? We need your expertise and your we'll advice. And I'll bring somebody along who is the head of a finance company who shows you how you can do it without losing your money. Well, that'd be great. Ted, thank you so much for thank joining you, us. Thank you, God right, bless God you. God bless you.